Chris Petri here. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming by. Come on in. Hey, we're going to have a great time. We're going to be painting a nice, beautiful cafe restaurant here uh, in this uh, video. We're going to draw it carefully. We're going to do all of the our three-point uh, uh, method of drawing, which is get the hash marks in around our painting. So we're going to get our hash marks in around our painting. We're going to get our preliminary sketch in, which is uh, just a general layout of the subject matter on our paper and then we're going to do our contour drawing and get all the details of the drawing done and then from there we're just going to do the uh, direct approach the a la prima approach of painting which is just starting with the darks and working right through the painting going from dark to light and finishing up with just some light touches on the um uh lighter uh, areas so now here this is the finished painting you can see maybe i'll move the palette out of the way We'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see the painting a little more. I'll go up a little higher like that. Okay, so that's the finished painting. This is the photograph. We'll put it next. That's the, paint, uh, that's the photograph next to it. We'll zoom in on that too as well. Okay, so we saw the finished painting. That's the photograph I worked from, and then we're gonna get started in just a second. Okay, so we're getting right back into it here. Uh, we just looked at the um, photograph of our caf uh, cafe and restaurant. This is a really nice scene. This can be something where, you know, again, we, we just uh, mentioned, um, Let's say you have a favorite, favorite place you like to go to for, uh, you know, breakfast or lunch or dinner, um, coffee, stop and get some coffee on the way to work, whatever the case is. If you have a favorite place, no reason why you can't paint that place. It's really a lot of fun to do watercolors. It, watercolor is such a fun medium because it, you actually, um, it just, it really has a, a light sense about it. You can create paintings of just fun, fun things around the house outdoors, on vacation, places around that you like to go visit, places that you frequent all the time near your home. You can almost make a little bit of a, uh, like a sketchbook of all your favorite places maybe. So you have a sketchbook, you can create a sketchbook of uh, favorite places locally. And then maybe you take some photos and then you, you go on uh, line, take some, you, you get some pictures online of something that's local. So you have pictures on your own device that you've taken. You have some online pictures you have and then you use them and you kind of put them all together if you want and you create a beautiful, you know, watercolor. And then you can have this as a little keepsake in your, um, in your sketchbook, your watercolor sketchbook. And you can even just sketch it with pencil, do that first, you know. There's so many options with drawing and painting and watercolor. It's such a fun medium. You can really just do, tackle any subject matter, anytime, anywhere. And, and it's just a, you know, a, a fun thing to do. So let's get started. Um, so we saw, again, the photograph and the, and the painting, finished painting. So basically, I'm just going to start out. And maybe the first thing I'll do is a preliminary sketch. Now, a preliminary sketch, if you follow me on, you know, quite a bit on my channel and you follow a lot of what I'm doing, most times you'll hear me say that preliminary sketch. Basically, all it is uh, is kind of getting an overall very light, super light sketch an overall feel of the overall composition of the painting so that we're going to get everything on the paper that looks to be pretty accurate and work out any issues that we might have you know so we do a first 
we do a dry run here so you know I'm kind of looking at my angles so I'm just gonna so I'm seeing that and again the hash marks we we talk about this too putting some hash marks on our tape so it's always good let's put some tape around our watercolor paper and if even if you have a sketchbook you can put that tape around your sketchbook page so this way you still have the um, ability to put in some um, some uh, hash marks. So what I'll do is I'm going to make a hash mark here and I'm going to call that the uh, peak. And then I'm looking at the peak and then I'm saying okay across this entire area from here to here a little bit past halfway is the corner of the building that goes completely vertical within this composition and then it stops just a little bit below the bottom of the painting so the bottom of the painting is about here um, so there's about maybe an inch of sidewalk in this picture so I'll put the sidewalk here and just maybe put an SW sidewalk sidewalk SW make abbreviations it's a lot easier so now we have the sidewalk approximates here on both sides it kinda goes on an angle over here but we'll, we'll figure that out later we have our vertical for the corner of the building and then we can also maybe I think that will, will be fine if we can get those um, one more thing we should get is um, let's take a look at the angle so I'm gonna hold my pen across from me and I'm gonna transfer down the angle like so and that's gonna be the roof here and then the second floor starts approximately halfway between the sidewalk level and the roof level so we'll put this here and we'll say um, top of canopy there's a canopy there a black canopy so we'll put that there and this is looking good so we're again these hash marks really important and usually I find that once you've worked out your hash marks around your composition your painting that's a perfect time to take a break because you know that's you're thinking a lot you're trying to strategize figure out where everything is so that when you go back in and do your drawing you're gonna have a lot easier it's gonna be much easier to, to draw this contour draw this and we're gonna do a preliminary sketch as well so we're gonna call this like a three part process first process we get our hash marks on the paper so that we kinda of have approximate locations of key areas of the drawing second part of the process is doing our preliminary sketch where we just super lightly get our overall uh, composition in drawn in with a very light sketch and then we step back and look at that and if it looks good then we go in and we do our third part process which would be the contour drawing which we're just gonna continue on and do all the more of the details of the drawing so I hope that makes sense and I always say if you haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button below don't miss out on all the great information here we have on uh, our channel we're constantly making new videos and um, I don't want you to miss a thing so please hit the subscribe button if you hit the notification bell right next to it on the right side and you click on uh, all notifications that means that anytime a new video comes out you'll be alerted right away and then you can check it out you can maybe see if you want to try the video uh, try the composition or the painting out maybe it's not your um, subject matter you like to paint that's fine maybe the next week we're gonna have something you like we do everything landscapes cityscapes flower paintings we do um, 
We do uh, figure painting, portrait painting. We do a lot of different things here, so there's always something you're going to enjoy and like to do. And it may not be every week that you have your favorite subject matter, but it will eventually come back up again, and then you can jump on in and have fun with us as we paint another uh, another painting that you that you really are going to enjoy. So. Let's again take a break. We did our hash marks. That's plenty of work enough that we could say let's take a five or ten minute break, stretch a little bit. Um, if you're seated, if you're uh, right now I'm standing, so I'm going to just actually have a seat quick for five or ten minutes, maybe have a little bit of coffee and just uh, relax, watch a little bit of YouTube, and then I'll come right back on and we'll get started again. And again, this is the first part. Get our hash marks. And of course we saw our um, picture. That's our our photograph of our restaurant, cafe and restaurant, beautiful cafe and restaurant, gorgeous sunlight here in this picture on the sidewalk, and it's more a um, little more shade on the building, a cooler kind of picture, you know, with some bright sunlight on the sidewalks. So it looks great. We have some awesome architecture here. Look at the beautiful architecture. So let's get back into it in just a few minutes, but let's take a break, build up our concentration, and then we'll be ready to... Um, get started again. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, welcome again. Welcome back. We're just actually getting started. We just looked at the finished painting and the f actual photograph that we uh, are working from. And we're just going to actually start out here and take a look at our process of how we're going to actually uh, draw and paint our composition here of this beautiful cafe and restaurant. This is a local place, not too far from my home. Uh, my fr a friend of mine loves to frequent here. He goes there for breakfast, lunch, dinner sometimes. Um, he has a business, so he probably does business meetings here and things like that. Um, so I looked it up the other day. We're going to meet out there someday soon for some breakfast or lunch. <clears throat> and uh, actually, so I said, let me you know take a look at the place. And he gave me the name of the place. So I was looking at it. It's a beautiful, gorgeous uh, cafe and restaurant. And this is uh, a look. Again, we just saw this um, photograph and we saw the finished painting, but we'll just look at it one more time here and then we'll start figuring out how we're gonna draw and paint this. So um, we're gonna kind of take the three point process for getting this uh, painting, uh, the drawing process of this painting completed. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll take this, we'll set this across from us uh, at our art table. So I'm going to put this across from me. <clears throat> then what I did is I already have my hash marks set up just to save a little bit of time so that you can kind of see. Let me go back one more time here with this. We'll bring this over here and we'll kind of look and see here so you can see this, the structure the uh, cafe and restaurant. So here what I did is I just looked at the photograph and I said, all right, the peak of the roof is here. So I made a hash mark up there. Then I said the corner of the building is here. And I put a hash mark here. And that corner was about a little bit past halfway in the um, rectangle that we're working in. So this is a little bit past halfway halfway's about there so it's a little bit over looks good <clears throat> then I have the roof over here this might be a little low but we'll, we'll we'll check it out we'll as we draw we'll do a three three part process our first process is we get our hash marks so we have a general idea of where uh, we're gonna have all of our main uh, components of our drawing situated on our rectangle here. All right, so now we're going to continue. We're looking at the um, top of the canopy, approximately halfway between the ground level, bottom of building, and roof. Halfway is approximately the top of the canopy, so we made that hash mark there, top of canopy. And then here we have um, bottom of the building, so we put the uh, sidewalk. I'll just Put that SW sidewalk and then again here sidewalk SW so you can kind of see how the first point of the process is getting those hash marks in so that you kind of have things 
somewhat figured out. So we have this here, top of the building. So those hash marks really are helpful. So that when we're drawing, we kind of can, let's say we're going to draw this top roof portion here. So we come up with our roof area. We come up with our roof, the peak of our roof. This is the ridge, the upper ridge. This is a gable roof. So this is a gable style roof here. Here we have the roof. And then here we have the uh, rake edge of the roof, or the gable end of the roof, we could call that, coming down. So as we look, we can kind of say, all right, it's pretty good there. And then it trails down this way. So that looks pretty good. It's almost like a straight, almost like a straight uh, edge, right? All the way up to the peak. But just there's a little tiny bit of a, an angle there, but just very little. So you can almost see that, right? That's like that, and then like this. So just a touch of a um, <clears throat> kink in that line. So that's one thing, and that's what you accomplish when you use those hash marks. You're able to sort of aim for things as you're drawing, and you kind of say, all right, I'm up here now, I see that. I start up here, and then right away you kind of see where you're aiming at this way. So this way you're not going down and trailing down over here somewhere on your drawing and then you're like uh, spending half your time erasing that. Let's not do that. Let's not erase and have a problem with that. Let's let's just think out, you know, our process here. First part, let's get our hash marks. And this here is the corner of the building. So I think I needed to do that. So that's the corner of the building. So you can kind of see how that works, the hash marks. Okay, so now we have the hash marks in. Now the second part will be to do a preliminary sketch, a nice light, super light sketch to get everything somewhat in place. And then the third part's going to be our contour drawing. We're going to actually go in there and really put down our lines and our drawing and get our drawing in there and all the details that we need to make this look like a beautiful painting. And again, we don't have to do a ton of uh, drawing here. We can do some work with our brush and our paint. So don't feel you have to draw every single detail. That wouldn't be a good idea. This has a lot of detail in it, this photograph, as you can see. So you'll watch me as I go, and you'll see how I'm going to minimize a lot of the details here. All we need to do is capture a few details here and there, and then the whole picture will look beautiful. It'll tell the story of a beautiful cafe and restaurant here and people having some uh, lunch or some breakfast out here, coffee, maybe some dinner. We'll make some people walking in the door here, walking around and uh, coming in and out of the restaurant. And so let's do that. Let's have a fun time at this. But again, the same process that I always use, and those of you that watch me all the time, you'll know I use this process. First thing, hash marks around the tape. We tape no matter what you're using. If you're using paper, if you're using a sketchbook, put tape down into your sketchbook so that you have a border that you can draw on. And then you can take that off when the painting is done and you won't see all those lines and things. Does that make sense? Get the hash marks on there. We'll do our preliminary sketch next. Let's take a break though first. We did a lot of work already. We got our hash marks in. We made sure we have a good start of our uh, drawing here so that we don't get off track to start with and then we'll uh, come back just in a few minutes and we'll do our preliminary sketch which is just getting in the main idea of the drawing hope this makes all good sense to you and uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, take a break and again before i take a break i always mention please take take a, a time out and click the subscribe button below um, feel free to click that subscribe button this way, each video that comes out each week that we're creating here on my channel, you'll get that video. If you like it, great. You're going to work along with that video. You'll follow the process and try the painting and the drawing. If not, and it's not your cup of tea with the uh, subject matter, you might not like doing, you know, kind of like a city or a streetscape or a uh, cityscape type drawing and painting. That's okay. Next week, we might, you know, we'll probably be doing maybe uh, some flowers flower paintings so we're always changing our uh subject matter here but everything is always watercolor so always remember that this is your watercolor channel 
Whenever you want any information on watercolor, come here, hit that subscribe button. You'll get all of the work that we're doing here on a weekly basis. If you like the what we're doing for the current week, great, work on it. If not, take a break. You might want to check out your other favorite channels that you have, work on those, and then you come back the next week and you'll you'll be notified each week as we're doing our new new paintings and drawings. Okay? All right, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll start doing our drawing. All right, we're getting uh, started again here. Let's uh, keep working through the next steps here. So the first step we said was we take our photograph or our subject matter and we get our hash marks around our tape. So we tape down our paper, or if you're working in a sketchbook, you tape some uh, artist tape around your rectangle in your uh, sketchbook. We got our key points around our rectangle here. Now what we'll do is I'll set this across from me. Now, I have a kneaded eraser and I usually will, sometimes I need to just erase a touch here and there. So we have our gable end of our wall here, the gable end of, uh, this is the gable roof here we have. And now this is our preliminary sketch. So essentially we're just trying to, I'm gonna take my pencil, hold it up to my, so I just take my, my mechanical pencil like this and I hold it up to the photograph and I kind of get the angle by looking at the photograph, holding my pencil to the angle on the photograph and then I bring it just, I just hold it the same angle and I just bring it right down there like that. Then I might use my other hand to just put a point there and then sort of say, okay, so that's about the angle there. And again, what we're doing right now is a preliminary sketch. We're getting some very light lines just to uh, and then if you find That line is going to go like this, super light. We'll come back and we'll do more work to this. We're going to do our contour drawing over the top of our preliminary sketch, but we just want to make sure our preliminary sketch is good. Again, with this type of a, a subject matter, you're not going to want to really get too bogged down in a lot of details because there, there is a lot of details on a building like this, a cafe, restaurant like this. The people that designed this beautiful building here, they they did all kinds of really beautiful design work to it. And when the people that came out and constructed it, they followed the blueprints that you know for this building, and they created everything exactly like the architects and the engineers that put this building, the design together. But if, as an artist, if you try to capture every kind of detail that is on this building, it would be really it would be too much. It would it would kind of just cause a lot of uh, difficulty with trying to just get the painting done. We'd spend ten hours trying to do a drawing, and we don't we don't really want to do that. We want to try to capture the main details, and that's what we're doing. So I'm going to capture this line here that goes over here, like so. So we're getting the the main idea of everything. So here, there's. Just a and again, I'm just trying to get an idea of everything. There's a second line here. Now the trim there. 
and then there's the roof some there's some gutters on the roof but I'm just looking to get the main idea of things right now so here we have the building then this portion of the building has a slight angle this way so it's not straight it's a slight angle this way again preliminary sketch you capture that just so we have it and then this here the same thing this is going to be slightly kind of an angle this way just a little bit not straight a little bit this way so we go this way like that now we can do a little bit of roof there it's not in the picture but that's okay we can add a little bit of roofing and then again we have some brickwork over here and again we said over here we have the canopies slight angle upwards so this angle here is not quite straight it's a little bit up like this and we that's we capture that just so we have that and this is the canopy like that and again you're just seeing that I'm trying to I'm trying to capture all the main details that I need to this is a little bit this way. Now we have we have a canopy over here. Like so. It should be relatively close in level to this other one, so I kind of see I'm a little bit high on that. No problem, I just do a quick little uh, erasing there, and then we just lower that down a little bit, like that. that. There we go. So it should be approximately the same level as this over here. Like that. And then you can kind of see how, when we're doing this preliminary sketch, you can really kind of just get the... You can get the... Uh, you can get the main idea of everything. This is a little bit lower there. So this is not quite halfway. This is larger here. This space here is larger than here to here. And then we have, and again, you don't have to do everything exact. Try to simplify things if you can. So I'm going to simplify this a little bit. And we have that there. This is there. Just so we have Some ideas of the main the main structure. We want to get the main stru structural features of this without getting too uh, involved with the every detail. Obviously, every detail of this you know type of a photograph and a picture in this architecture would be really incredibly difficult. So we just want to catch some lines, line up some things like this. So this is the brickwork here. Then here there's um, some some stonework there. So this is stonework here. And stonework is always beautiful. And we're going to continue that like that. So 
And then here, what we have is we have <clears throat> we have stonework here. And then there is some bushes and things like that. Some plantings and bushes. That's very important. Landscaping uh, features here on this beautiful cafe and restaurant. And then we have if you want <clears throat> this is a preliminary sketch but you can kind of see that I've gotten a lot of it done. I, we might not even have to do a contour drawing. We just might have done enough here that we really don't need to do a contour drawing. We can just leave it as we did it. So if you do a preliminary sketch like this and you find that you've gotten enough details in here that you don't really need to do to go over it again a second time and do like, like a full uh, drawing over the top, that's fine. I kind of feel like I... Uh, created enough details here that I think I can use this as the um, okay so now we're just going to do the light here so there's a light and again have fun with this don't get too overwhelmed with details if if you want to have less details, have less details. Don't worry about putting everything in. So there's a light light post here. And then with this light post, there's also another few lanterns here. And there's a lantern over here, pretty much the same level over here. And uh, so we try to capture both of those lanterns here, these light fixtures. They look great. They're add a lot of uh, excitement to the design of the overall. structure here and all right so you can kind of see I I've done a lot of um, details here but I, I didn't really want to get too involved with every detail. I don't think I did, but here we're just going to go with some more. The bushes over here, very loose, just I'm trying to kind of rough those in, the bushes here, along the uh, sidewalk. And we have the sidewalk here. And then I'll just put some of the the sidewalk uh, paint. So there's markings here for the crosswalk. And then there's we're going to make people over here at the tables. So now we've done a lot of work. We've done almost 15 minutes of drawing. It's kind of you know it's a lot of you know stress and focus and energy trying to get all these details down. I would say, you know, if you want to simplify this, try simplify, you know, simplifying it even way more than I have. I've gone with a lot of details here, but if you can just get the basics of it, of the structure, the shape of the roof, the gable roof, the corner of the building, once you get that, you pretty much have a lot done, and then you just try to get some canopies in there, 
and some light fixtures and you might be really good. So you do as much as you want or as little as you want as far as details go. Or you can even just look up another photograph that might be a place that's nearby where you live. You can create your own painting of something very, very similar to this. I'm just giving, what I'm trying to do is basically show you the process, the steps, the uh, methods to get a uh, composition completed in a logical process of number one, hash marks once you have your photograph or you're at the location and you're actually doing it on location you want to get your hash marks on your tape two you want to do a preliminary sketch where you kind of rough in your lines in regards to your um, hash marks so you're going to kind of do your very light sketch figuring out okay how do things connect up over here the roof down here we have our hash marks hash mark canopy canopy hash mark down here sidewalk sidewalk once you get that corner of building you're sort of you're already like halfway there then you're just sort of adding in those details that you know as many details as you would like to do so what i'm saying is those are the three main things so it's part you know for the first the first part is really the step one is getting those hash marks those are critical on your tape Two, we're going to say is getting a light, super light sketch just to rough out the main features of the composition, the building. And then three, drawing in more of the details. So you could call that the contour drawing. Um, contour drawing is basically you start in one location and you can kind of just go through the drawing carefully and slowly. I did this more in a... Um, kind of a piecemeal fashion which is fine too if you have a really technical uh, photograph or, or you're working and you're looking at a really highly technical architectural building house you know something structural you know any kind of buildings structures houses anything like that sometimes it takes a little more maybe just um, careful drawing of each of the features as you go and kind of referring back and forth to your drawing or if you're in plain air and you're out there on location. But that's the main the main thing is really getting those hash marks down and then sort of going from there getting some rough drawing in there to kind of give you the overall how everything is going to be looking inside your rectangle and then third you're getting some of the details and I think we have a lot right now the only thing left I think we'll do is we'll get some figures over here at this gorgeous uh, cafe and restaurant. We'll have a table with some people enjoying a gorgeous, beautiful sunny day, having some coffee or some lunch or dinner. And then uh, we'll get in some, a little bit of uh, details on the windows and doors. There's some windows over here and windows and doors over here. Maybe a little bit of um, the uh, signage over the uh, front entryway of this location there's a couple more windows up here and there's a um, half moon uh, window up here so we'll get those last few details in this drawing done in just a second but again I hope you get that three-part uh, process three-part process you can't go wrong with that okay so we'll come right back just in a second and uh, we'll finish up the drawing and then from there we'll just get right in and do the painting Okay, it's back to work. Let's get back into it here. So, we left off on the uh, finishing up our drawing right now, our contour drawing. And we basically, our main focus was we're not going to get bogged down in too many details. If you see a, a subject matter, whether you're uh, looking at a photograph or in a book, or if you're out in the field and you're drawing and sketching from real life, you know, uh, plain air, and in, in, uh, uh, you're working from real life out outdoors and so forth, and you're drawing like maybe some buildings or architecture or a house or some kind of a, a any kind of scene, you know, a street, you know, streetscape, landscape, uh, you know, uh, any kind of scene whatsoever. It's good to always just try to keep the keep the uh, details to a minimum, and you can always add in more details later once you're done drawing and painting, you can always add in things later. So you, 
the the key is it's better to add less details in the beginning and then at the very very end of your painting once you're done drawing and painting everything you can always add in a few details here and there so keep that in mind so that you don't get too um, bogged down with details and, and by the time it's ready to paint there's so many pencils and sketches and lines on all over the paper that it's kind of uh, isn't uh, an enjoyable time for you to do your drawings and your painting so I hope that makes sense and let's get back into it here so we created our drawing we're just going to finish a few more details so we noted that in the we can even take a look here one more time so right now we're going to add this half moon window up here on the brickwork two more windows we have to draw in basically um, we'll have to draw in another light fixture and a few just maybe some light lines to denote the uh, uh, doors here the front entryway the storefront entry with uh, 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 door d the double doors here some more windows in the framing of the windows the window frames the panes over here we'll do a little bit of that and then we'll put in our figures over here having some uh, breakfast or lunch or even dinner and I think once we have those uh, details we'll be fine and then we can start painting so let's do that let's start out we'll set our phone across from me okay I'm gonna look down here and get the center point okay so that's the window some trim then we have um, this window is so I hold my pencil out in front of me this window is in line with the edge of this half moon window okay now I notice we might want to adjust this a little bit I might have uh, drawn in a few things not perfect so not a worries let's do our window over here like that keystone there and then we have the other window here like that And then our keystone here, like so. And I think from that point, we're pretty good. We have There's some uh, dental mold molding up here on this. Doesn't have to be, we don't have to go incredibly detailed, maybe a little bit. Quite a bit of ornate. Moldings around this entryway here. And then here we're going to have our um, some signage. And then I just, uh, you know, kind of did a little bit of script, script here, script writing, just for the... Okay, and then there we have some window panes there. 
We have some doors here. And that's all. And then we'll have a we'll have a figure or two here going in. And a couple of figures. I just do a little little sketchy kind of figures here. We'll paint those in. And then over here. And then let's see, we got a fixture over here. Another fixture over here. here a couple of window panes over here that's enough to give us the feel of the windows over here this is the brickwork on the building there and then we have some some people enjoying some so we have some ch chairs here and some figures And this is where we just add in some details, kind of just a, a grouping of interesting shapes and we don't have to get too worried about details. You just have a level line here for a table, maybe a, um, a support for the table and then some chairs, a few chairs, a few figures and you, you have it. There you have it. And you have your people enjoying some lunch, some breakfast, some dinner at the cafe and restaurant here. And, uh, and this is plenty. We don't have to get too detailed. There's some shadowing over here. So that's in shadow. And then this is the sidewalk and there's a little bit of a shadow here. And then we'll put our feature here, our leader, leader pipe for the um, for the rainwater that comes down. So we're going to have that there too. You can use a ruler if you want. If you want to keep things a little more st straight lines, if you if you don't want to, you just use a ruler. Get a couple straight lines every now and again with a ruler you don't have to use the ruler all the time but you can you can use it once in a while to uh, get a couple straight lines just to make things go quicker and as you can see we've got the painting I mean the drawing pretty much done now we'll go in and we'll do our uh, our painting for this and we'll kinda just see how that progresses and it should go really nice so we have lots of details here to um, help us uh, really create a beautiful painting of this cafe and restaurant here in beautiful New Jersey in the United States and close by to where I live and uh, we'll we'll keep working on this and I think it looks good so far for the drawing the drawing looks solid we have all the main ingredients of what we need to uh, create this painting and again you can always go back in and do details so feel free to do less details in the beginning and then add them in later once you're completely finished so I feel like I've added a lot of detail, but I did leave some details out. And you can 
also paint in some details too. And I just add in the the windows, the window panes. Okay, I hope you enjoy this so far. Again, please, if you haven't, subscribe. Have a good time. Subscribe. Come on by. Once you subscribe below, we click the subscribe button and also the notification bell right next to it. This way you know each uh, week when we uh, create new videos, you'll be, you'll be alerted right away. You can check it out. If you like it, it's something you want to work on, great. You come on by, you work on it. And then if it's something you're not really too keen on working on, not a big deal. You can come back the next week and try something different, something more that you, you like to uh, work on. Maybe it's flowers. Maybe you're not so uh, uh, too happy about maybe doing some, you know, street scenes like this. But, you know, you might want to, or architecture, you might want to work on flowers, um, you know, seascapes, landscapes, things like that. That's fine. I try to cover all the um, different subject matter for watercolor. Everything here is watercolor, drawing and painting watercolor. So don't miss out. Subscribe and we'll uh, have a great time painting together, drawing together. And let's uh, come back in just about five or ten minutes. We'll take a quick break and we'll start our painting. Okay, everyone, now we're going to get started with painting. We have all of our paints ready to go. The only thing I have to do is empty my water bucket and we'll be ready to start. And usually what I do is when I... Uh, Get back at get back uh, started with painting. I just take my water bucket and I use like a fan brush and I just um, st stir around all the uh, paint that's at the bottom of my water bucket. Make sure that's all um, removed from the bottom of my water bucket here, like that. So I do this here, empty that out. And then I just go back in with some fresh water. Okay, now we're ready to start. Let's get going here. Let's do some Payne's Gray and Ivory Black. Let's do our darks first. So I'm going in, I'm going to do my dark tonal values first here, my dark paints, dark colors. And that really looks good. Getting those darks in first. It really does help to, um, I'll add a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and some cerulean blue. Here we go. And again, we're just having fun with this. We're not really trying to, um, we're just enjoying the process here. We're using our, uh, our three, three point process, three step process for drawing. And now that we're going in and doing our painting, we're just doing our painting in a la prima fashion, starting out with the darks. And we just work our, our dark uh, darks first in our painting, and we just keep going from there. So we just start out with our darks. And then we, I think I'm going to do my light fixtures with my needlepoint brush. 
So I'll use a needlepoint brush to uh, do the uh, light fixtures because it's uh, these are kind of finer details on these light fixtures. So we'll use the needlepoint brush for that and. Uh, We'll uh, continue here. All right, so we have that there. Okay, we'll do our leader pipes. These are for our uh, rainwater off the roof, the, the uh, leader pipes. They drain the water off the uh, rooftop, so we have those. And they come down the building makes a really nice design feature, a nice dark to uh, sort of, uh, you know, it kind of ties in with the canopies. And this goes right down to the ground level. Like that. And again, we're going to look and see where where are the darks here. Okay, well, we could do some more darks. Let's use our needlepoint brush. We'll get some Payne's gray, ivory black, burnt sienna, and let's do our light fixtures. Try not to lean into the paint too much if you can. And I find that the light is this seems to be a backlit painting. So the lights the lights in front of us. But we can we can kind of have a fun time and just get the Get the main portion of the drawing and the painting done without too much worries. Like that. So here we see we have the There we go. And we have the light fixtures over here. And over here as well, we have the light fixture over here. Take your time when you do your light fixtures. And we have another one over here. There we go. So we have three light fixtures. Those all look really good. And again, we're doing our darkest darks first. So we're using all the our black uh, paint here, uh, ivory black, Payne's gray mixed in, even a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, a little bit of even cobalt blue over here, uh, cerulean blue over here, just in case we needed a little bit of a cooler look to things. But I think we're going to stick with the darker darks over here, like that. And sometimes I'll dry off the brush just a little bit with the brush, with the uh, tissue like that. And then we just have our and we're just going to do some writing here on the uh, this is the. Um,
This is the front entryway, and, th and this is the signage above the door of the, the restaurant, cafe and restaurant, and then there's some more finer uh, writing here. Okay, so that's good. Darkest darks are in. There are more darks here, so we're going to find those. But these are the real darks that we can really see are really like just, you know, they're really singing out in the in this drawing and painting as the darkest darks, which is, these are kind of a, a mixture of uh, ivory black, Payne's gray, and then a little bit of uh, color in there too, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna, burnt umber, a little bit of cerulean blue, but for the most part, a black uh, color here looks really good. It's part of the architecture of the building, the design of everything, so that's fine. That looks good. Now we're gonna uh, we'll get our number five, Kalins uh, Da Vinci Kalinsky Sable travel brush, and we're gonna uh, start to work in some more darks. So let's just get started. We're going to take a break in a few minutes. We've done a lot of details here. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's do a few of these. Not quite pure darks, but pretty dark. Let's do the... Uh, these are more simple. These are the uh, features up above on the gutters and the uh, trim work. So let's do that. Here we can just kind of get some lines going. There's some lines there. There's uh, some lines up here. And we're going to do the roof, too. The roof is dark black shingles, I think. Probably would look really good on this type of a uh, color scheme with this building. Um, so we're going to have some darks, too, up here. Let's get some of those darks going here. And let's get that those roof shingles on there. Nice darks here, mix in some colors, mix them around. There we go. And we just use the brush. There we go. We see how we use the brush here. You, you know, you kind of just press the brush down really good and you get a wide uh, line there, a, a wide uh, paint line there, and then we just like that. Leave some mysterious things happening, a little bit of splashing, a couple splashes over here and there. So just to keep it fun, loose, you don't want to be suffering over all the details. Just if you don't like a couple splashes, you can lift them up with some tissue, you know. But once you're done with the whole painting, you're never going to see those splashes. They're just going to fit right in with everything and make it look like an interesting part of the design of the of the painting. So, and uh, we got some more shadows there like that. And lots of cerulean blue. So we will some uh, burnt sienna, and again try to mix in some colors. So now I'm just trying to mix in a little bit of color with the with the darks. So our our black color we can go over with a little bit of a glazing with some burnt sienna. Even a little bit of blue, cool blue. You can even add in a little bit of a little bit of uh, cadmium red. Make that a little bit warmer. The red, the the warm, the black colors. You can you can add in a little bit of uh, cadmium red and make that a little more interesting. Uh, you know, adding adding in some colors can really enhance 
like some dark darks that are really dense that you know are really you can add in those uh, even a little bit of yellow ochre a little bit of yellow ochre and then you can see we have good and then you can even go back in again with some more blacks some Payne's gray ivory black and the darkest darks over here like that there you go so here what you have is a nice variety in your darks anyone can just grab some ivory black or Payne's gray and put it in there and say oh good beautiful darks done here what we did is we added these additional colors burnt sienna cerulean blue cadmium red yellow ochre you add a little bit of those varieties to your darks and all of a sudden the painting is more interesting it looks more uh, more colorful okay let's take a break we did a lot of work so far with our darks here we did a lot of darks let's take a break and we'll come back in just like 10 10 or you know 10 minutes or 15 minutes take a break enjoy that break grab a cup of coffee cup of tea a cup of you know glass of water some bottled water if you're standing up when you work have a have a seat for a little while if you're sitting down then you would stand up and walk around and stretch a little bit and uh, maybe just move around a little bit, stand up, walk around, get some exercise, you know, a little bit of walking. It all depends on how you like to work. If, you see, if you're if you seated when you work, you, you would tend to stand up when you take your break and walk around a little bit. If you're standing at your art table and you stand when you're doing your work, then you're better off sitting down for 10, 15 minutes. Just relax for a few minutes. You know, just uh, it's really a, a big help to... Uh, um, Relax for that 10, 15 minutes and we'll come back and we'll continue working on this. But already we have some great darks going and this is really, again, we're gonna see how easy it is to paint this because we're already got some powerful darks in there and that's a huge help. Uh, once we have these powerful darks in our painting, then we can use that as our um, kind of like a pace. Now we know we have a pace we're set. The darks are the darks. Now we can kind of look at everything else and gauge our darks and lights according to that dark dark within our painting okay come we'll be right back hurry up get a break 10 15 minutes and then come back all right we're back we're gonna get started again here we're working on our painting we've got our darks in as we said the darks are really incredibly important if you're painting a la prima we're painting right now a la prima which means we're just doing this all in one go with our painting we're not really doing glazings you know the glazing technique i've covered that numerous times on my channel and if you ever want to brush up on that you can just uh, uh type in my name chris petri and then you type in glazing technique and i probably have four or five videos at least that kind of cover the glazing technique in a real basic format where, you know, you're just covering the whole watercolor paper with a glazing of uh, light, light wash. Let that dry 100% and then you go over and do your darks. For this painting, we really wouldn't want to do that in that fashion because this is more of a painting where we have a lot of darks here and um, we have a lot of light tonal values within this. So... It's a good painting to do a la prima, and it's also a lot of details. Paintings with a lot of details, I think, are better when, when we're doing them in uh, an a la prima fashion or a direct approach, which is just starting with the darks and just paint through the painting. So we'll continue on here. Now we have um, our darkest darks in, and then if we squint, uh, when you squint, your eyes and you look at a photograph or when you look out at your subject matter if you're outdoors or you're looking even at pictures online your cell you know your uh, your electronic device your phones your iPads whatever you have if you squint your eyes and you look at the uh, photograph of your subject matter you'll kind of notice a pattern you'll see the lights really kind of stand out as well as the darks so 
when I squint my eyes and look at this, and if I even take my phone carefully and I show you the painting once again, or the photograph once again, you can kind of see how if you squinted your eyes, you're going to see all these areas as darks, the canopies, the windows, the bushes, the brickwork, that's all pretty much very uh, darker tonal values. And the darkest darks are the canopies, the black, the black and dark brown, bronze looking uh, uh, colors. As well as the windows here, you can see that the windows are very dark. There's a lot of darks in there, dark greens, browns, bluish greens here and there. So the windows here, blues, like the cerulean blues and French ultramarine blues. So you see automatically when you squint the darkest dark. So that's what we're going to continue to work work on. So we'll continue. Maybe we'll start working on the uh, windows. The windows are reflecting the trees on the outside of the building. So across from this building, there's some trees that gets reflected in the windows as dark greens. Same over here. Across from the building are dark trees and that gets reflected in the windows. You'll see the darkest darks here in the windows and as well up here too in the windows you'll see dark blues and darkish greens and blues here. Same thing. Those are just um, basically reflecting back the um, the darkest darks of the uh, uh, outside surroundings that uh, are around this building. So that's a simple thing to remember. Your windows generally reflect what's on the outside of the building. So if you have a lot of trees around the area, you're going to see those dark greens and blues. And then of course uh, up here, just some more shadowing colors and it's a little bit darker up here in these windows. So let's get the darks, uh, cont you know, let's continue on with our darks. And I'll set my phone up across from me and I'm just going to continue with the same palette of colors. Payne's, uh, that's uh, ivory black. Payne's Gray, some Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, Cerulean Blue. So we have a nice range of colors. Let's get some green here. Olive Green, Sap Green. So this is Sap Green here, Olive Green here, uh, a little bit of French Ultramarine Blue, a little bit of uh, Raw Umber. You can kind of mix up your uh, color choices as you would uh, like so that looks pretty good though and then so we have our French ultramarine blue maybe down here a little bit burnt umber all right so let's get back over here now we're doing the windows and there's some lighting I'm not gonna get again you can only do so many details so don't try to go crazy with details I'm just going to get the, the basic idea of lots of dark darks over here in these windows. And I'm going to leave those window panes in that I drew in. So you can see how I penciled in those window panes. Let's get those in and leave those in the painting. And we're just washing in these colors, mix in some variations here, some yellow ochre too. Maybe some cerulean blue over here. Then we have some cerulean blue. Don't worry about all this mess on my palette. It's all organized. Darks here, the blacks right here, and then I mixed in some other colors. But if you get, if you find that you're, keep your palette organized somewhat if you find that it's too if there's too many colors on there uh, I would clean the palette with uh, some paper towels and start again but I think I I've been working many 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 years with uh, watercolors so I kind of I can keep track of my colors a little easier. If you've been painting a long time, then you probably can do the same thing. You can keep track of all your colors and you don't have to clean your palette as much. But if you're kind of newer to watercolor, just clean, you know, every once in a while, 
take the paper towels and wipe off all the paint and just keep using the same colors you're using all the time in your painting. If that makes sense, you know? And then uh, you won't have an issue. Now here we're going to do some bushes over here, we said. Okay, and then as we go into the bushes, they get darker on the bottom areas, like that. Like that. So... Now this is... The fun part. We have lots of greens over here. We have some uh, cadmium lemon yellow. And cadmium lemon yellow works great with uh, bright sunlight. So there's some bright sunlight over here. That we can see. And then, and we have all these wonderful people here. They're having lunch, they're having breakfast, or they may be even having dinner. They're just enjoying the outdoors at this restaurant and cafe and uh, we will um, continue with our darks as the, underneath our tables here so this is this is where we we kind of make those table shapes and chair shapes where you have the legs of the chairs and you don't have to get it you don't have to you don't have to do anything more than really just do some of those uh, verticals the vertical brush strokes there and as we do those vertical brush strokes and then we do the shadowing underneath it and we just mix it up a little bit like that and that is fine and you can do some uh, yellow ochre there too. Put some worms in there. And again, if you start to add in some of these yellow ochre, a little bit of uh, cadmium red underneath here in these shadow areas, it just adds to the uh, interesting look of um, the shadow areas and the tables and chairs and and you can add some the backs of the chairs here I'm going to do that right now see I'm doing the backs of the chairs and then over here is the table and I think really I'm just going to do absolutely minimum uh Cadmium red and cadmium red and yellow ochre for the uh, for the faces here. And you can add those in like that. And then you can add in different colors for the shirts and things like that. And I find that if you just, if we keep it to a minimum, the details will be okay. And we leave a little bit of that white paper on top of the uh, figures on the heads and shoulders. We can come back also and have some titanium white highlights. We'll do that maybe. 
but uh, we can change the colors of the faces a little bit. You can do some faces, maybe more burnt sienna. Maybe you can have some burnt umber in some of the complexions. Um, it's probably more uh, preferable than just going with one continuous color the same all the way across the uh, figures. So if you can change the colors of the flesh tones on the uh, figures, you'll be fine. And I think And I just go over the top with a darker tonal value to sort of um, accentuate the uh, the dark and light, and a couple splashes just to add some interest in that area instead of making it kind of stagnant. It's got some interesting uh, texture to it, and I think we're good. I think we have. We've, I think we have the, the basic, the basic uh, look of what we wanted to have here. So we have some darks over here. And that looks pretty good. And we could add a little bit of blue maybe there. And some splashes. And then some blue across here. This is in the shadowing. Like that. And then we're going to do our stonework. There we go. Look at the stonework here, beautiful. Um, stonework is always colorful and uh, we'll, we'll do that continuation here of the stonework. That stonework is looking fantastic here and then we have that going across. So I'm doing some uh, shapes, some stone shapes here. And maybe we'll do some yellow ochre. And as we do stonework, we can remember that stonework looks best if you can um, make large shapes and then smaller stone shapes. It tends to look really good that way. If you can kind of get that variety of uh, sizes of stone. So here we have some stone shapes here. Some smaller little small pieces over here. Then maybe up here we have a larger piece like that. And we can also add in some white paint. You can splash a little bit too. That works to get stone texture. Splash in there. Like that. That there, Woohoo, look at that! You just add some splashes and you got stonework immediately. Look at that! There you go. See, watercolor—you don't have to work all that hard. You can get some really cool things going on with some splashes.
okay like that and then we're going to do a couple vertical shapes for our we have some some interesting tree shapes here so let's do this okay we have more tree shapes here so look at this we're going for it you take your brush and you hold it on the side and you kind of just scrape around with it circular and scraping kind of thing you know you just touch down every once in a while and you have tree shapes leaves and then you can splash some get some paint sometimes you have to add a little bit of water to that to get your splashes there you go see that like that then you get some of your yellow uh, cadmium uh, lemon yellow for your brighter uh, colors in your trees up on the top of the tree where the sunlight is so the sunlight is where your tree leaves are going to be brighter like that cadmium le lemon yellow look like that see how that's like sap green and olive green color then you get your cadmium lemon yellow over here and that's where you have your um sunlit leaves of your tree and then you have it there splash a little bit of finger painting maybe a little bit here's a couple spots here and there and you try to keep it to a minimum not uh it's always good to just do a couple things and then a little bit of blue underneath for shadowing you could do some purple too purple looks good the only thing now is since we haven't used purple at all and now we're going to use a little bit of the ultramarine violet which is purple you're going to want to add it over here too we don't want to add colors in one spot on a painting and not add it into the other areas so let's make sure to add the uh, ultramarine violet by Windsor Newton and some other spots on the painting too as well and I think that's good all right we've been working 20 minutes already I'm telling you this painting is really fun it's exciting take your time doing it and again uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe we're doing fun paintings like this all the time over here at my channel it takes a little bit of time sometimes we're working an hour or two but it's really worth it the effort of working a couple hours you get all the information you need here I go through all the methods and techniques and steps to get to this point where you can get a painting draw you know you can draw your uh, draw your subject matter lay it all out draw it and then get your painting going and it's really just a step-by-step -step process so I cover this all each video I do I always try to be thorough give you all the information you need so please subscribe you'll get great information on watercolors come on back week after week you'll get some really great information and even if you're not gonna paint the video uh, paint the painting that we're doing you can watch it and learn some techniques and you know you can apply that to your other paintings that we do on our channel because we do all subject matter here on this channel all right okay we'll be right back all right we're back again you made it you're continuing to watch continuing to learn this is great you're gonna learn fantastic things on my channel you can see here we're, we're really we're we're just you know grinding along here on this painting it's it takes a long time this is a pretty intricate painting here i didn't think it was going to be all that detailed but it actually is quite a lot of uh, details on this painting a lot of colors and uh so this is something that um you know you just you take your time on it you keep working at it you take breaks you know maybe you work on it two or three different days i'm trying to get through this here you know obviously in uh um you know a couple hours of time so you might see me pick up the pace a little bit here and maybe leave out a few details because you know i realize you know you're trying to paint this and you're not going to want to spend hours upon hours looking at this video you want to get in there and do it right so okay we're going to take that into account that we're not going to continue to take hours and hours and hours of details here 
let's just keep working and I'll try to simplify things a little more. So now what I'm thinking is, so I'll just give you my thoughts right now. So right now I'm thinking, okay, I want to get this moving along. Um, but I don't want to really, I want to actually, I want to do this as if I'm doing a, a finished painting, if I'm trying to do a painting for a gallery show, or if someone hired me to do a painting and I'm trying to, so in that case, let me just focus. I'm going to keep working here. And I'm just going to say, all right, my game plan was to continue with doing all the darks first, and then we do the lights. So again, I'm going to go in and do some burnt umber, burnt sienna, adding into the, uh, ivory black and uh, French ultramarine uh, uh, Payne's gray and then here we had we had some darks along the top of this like that now we are going to do some more darks over here and this is darks greens blacks so I'm going to go for the darks in these windows and I know that they're going to be reflecting what's surrounding this building so whatever's surrounding this building this is what's going to reflect in the glass and then also there is um, the interior of the building which is a little darker over in this section here so this is probably an area where there's not a, a an extreme amount of light inside the building. And then there's some, a little bit of uh, reflections and things. So I'm going to leave those as they are. And then over here, and then again, I try to add some try to Okay, so this is the other door. And always remember you can use some white paint to uh, capture a few lights. And if you ha I usually keep a, um, I usually have a, uh, I use uh, chopsticks for my um, trying to uh, sometimes I'll use this to uh, do some uh, ink wash so sometimes I use uh, chopsticks I'll use a razor knife and and make some points on my chopsticks and then I'll um, create uh, ink and wash paintings with that or sometimes I just use this to sc scratch a few lights in there Right now this paint's a little bit too wet to scratch in some white, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. And uh, we'll just keep working on this here. Like that. And then there's some figures in here, like this. this. I'll paint around the figures. And then there's some, maybe we'll make a cadmium red. Maybe there's somebody with a red shirt here. And maybe some yellow ochre shorts. And then there's another person here. So you can just have some fun, make some figures here. And then there's maybe someone with a cerulean blue shirt. And then some and some darks for the legs here. Okay, a couple figures there. Okay, there's some grass here, 
So we'll just put some grass like that. So that's some shadowing. We can always go over with another bit of glazing if we want, if once this dries, but let's keep working. Now we're going to go with some brick work, red brick. Let's make a nice mixture of alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, cadmium red, and uh, some yellow ochre. So let's just mix up that. A little bit, not too much. Don't mix it too much. Just a little bit. Burnt umber. And that's all. And then we're just going to go up here and let's just start putting in some brick color. This is in shadow. Let's add some blue. Some burnt umber. And then I'm going to try to move my arm around this way so I don't lean too much into my paint. And again, have fun with this. Mix the colors around. Lots of different variations in colors. Don't worry about if you're going to have a problem or you think you're going to mess up a wash or not add the right colors. Just add four or five different reds. I added alizarin crimson. I added burnt sienna, cadmium red, and then I added a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of cerulean blue for some cool... Uh, Warm and cool all the time when you're painting and and doing your washes. You don't want to. You want to always add a little bit of cool th uh, washes to your. And then you mix it around. I'm working on Fabriano paper, which gives you lots of working time. So you can just work and work and work on it and add colors in there, and it's not going to give you an issue. And that's pretty much pretty good there. Let's This is going to be a little bit darker here. There we go. Then we go with some cerulean blue. I rinse my brush. Get straight cerulean blue. And that's the window. This is not the focal point of the painting. This area is here, so don't worry about your uh, about the details up in this section too much. Okay, now we're going to continue on with our brickwork. Let's do that. There we go. Brickwork. Oh, we went over a section. No big deal. Plot it up quick. There we go. We can fix that later with some... went over another spot. See, that's really, we should have taken a break. That's why I say always take breaks because now you can see I'm starting to lose my concentration and I'm painting over the things I'm supposed to be being careful about. But that does happen. So we'll add some white to that later. Now here we have brick and leaves from the tree. So you just kind of mingle them together and there you have it. some variety to our reds.
and we just mix and mingle those like that. There we go. And burnt sienna. Uh, so we got some alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, cadmium red, burnt umber, yellow ochre, and some blue, cerulean blue. And we're just going to continue on here with our brickwork. Let's do our brickwork here. And Trying to be very careful with my washes, like that. And then once we get the wash of the brick on, then you can go in and get some uh, different variations here. Some little bit of cerulean blue. Put some cerulean blue on there. There we go. A little bit of green even too. Might as well. Put some green on there. All right, so now, you know, we've been working now. It's probably a good time for a break. You can see what happens when I wasn't taking breaks before I was going over lines that uh, these are white, um, these are uh, stone uh, bands, white stone bands that go across the brickwork. And I went across them with the red paint, which I was supposed to leave them white bands there. So sometimes if you go over something, it's not a big deal. You can go back and use some white paint and I just did it again. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just go over that with white paint, just so we can kind of uh, so we could lift up a little bit there like that. No big deal. Like that. There we go. Okay. This stays uh, white over here. It's kind of like a creamy off-white. We're kind of running out of room here to mix up our different washes, but I think we can... I added a little yellow ochre there. And I just added a little bit of that yellow ochre-y color over here too. Some splashing like that. There we go. A little bit of blue, too, here and there. We want to keep this. Okay, and then a purple. A little bit of a wash under there for shadow. That band is continuing over this way, too, as well. Here too as well. There we go. All right, look at that. I tap up a little bit of water and paint with, uh, with uh, tissue here and there. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. This is again taking some time. Have patience. Let's take a break. We'll continue with the windows here in just a second. I'll keep trying to work through this. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna add that there. All right, this is French Ultramarine Blue, some purple. Dark, dark, darks up here. And then, again, we're doing the darks. Green, wanna mix in some greens with that too. All right, here we go, more darks. Green, too, I want green in there. It's picking up the color of the trees on the exterior of the building, on the surrounding areas. Purple, shadows. A couple splashes. Okay, time for a break. I'm losing concentration here. We'll be right back. All right, you made it back again. This is a triathlon of a video here. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back. Woo! Well, this is a triathlon, I think, here. This has been a tough um, painting because there's a lot of details, a lot of colors, a lot of different things going on in this painting. And as you know on my channel, we always say, you know, let's let's stick with the basics, the fundamentals. I'm always doing the same things over and over and over. So like here I can see I've, I've kind of like, I gotta uh, get this uh, palette a little bit cleaned up here. So we'll take some paper towels. We'll take some paper towels and I, I have memorized all the colors we're using so I don't ever worry about that. And if you write down the colors as we go in your notes, if you wanted to do this painting and you're really excited about this painting, you know, you would just write down the colors maybe as we're going through the video and then when you go to paint it, you'll have all the colors written down that you know you need to use. And there's not a tremendous amount of colors really. But again, my palette, you can use a larger palette if you need more room. The point is sometimes too many colors on the palette in one time, the colors get all mixed up and then the colors sort of get muddy looking and don't look too pleasant. So. I kept the colors, I think, pretty separate. So I separated my colors and I felt that I wasn't compromised when it comes to my colors there. But now's a good time to just clean up brand new working area for our palette. Always want to do that. And then here you can see my palette or, or my bucket, my water bucket, has that muddy looking water. Time to clean up and get some fresh water. And I always keep a large um, container. It's a, a orange juice container. I keep an orange juice container of water. And I just add in some fresh, clean water, you know, two, three, four times during a painting. And I always try to mention some helpful things along the way. If you're going to go in and do some, like, really beautiful sky wash with water, you know, with blues, you know, if you're going to use some blue sky washes you definitely want to start out with some fresh clean water so if you have a if you have muddy water it's not always a bad thing but when you're going to do like a really light wash for the for the sky with some blues it could be better if you're using cleaner water but not you know it doesn't necessarily have you have to figure out as an artist you know how your um how your color mixing goes and you can use fresh clean water for a sky wash but then when you mix your blues you might want to add a little bit of like brown or uh, burnt sienna or some raw umber to your sky color to make it a little more interesting but if you leave your water muddy looking then you might just have to add some blue and then you use your muddy water in your bucket and you can get a good looking sky wash so the thing is I believe with most people intermediate and beginner artists you're probably better off keeping clean water but usually more people that are expert or you know pretty much expert watercolor artists they leave dirty water in their their buckets a lot of times which i notice and i do it sometimes too it's not a big deal but you have to kind of keep an eye on it just to keep a check on it okay so now we are going to get um 
I did do also something here that I think you might have noticed, maybe not. I erased the lines on the foreground here on the sidewalk area. I felt that it was better just to leave this area white paper instead of having like a wash on here. White paper looks good in this painting, so we can kind of utilize this white paper here in the foreground for sight, br bright sunlight. And then these areas here are actually white paper too. So, but we have to do a little bit of shadowing for some of the trim. So let's start doing that. Let's get some, I noticed some yellow ochre, some raw sienna, some cadmium red. Let's get some 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 warmer shadowing under there and as well over here there's some shadowing under here and over here we have some more of that brick color. Let's go with some more brick color up here. Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Red. Just that good looking brick color with a little bit of Cerulean Blue in there for some warm and cool variation. And we're going to There we go. So we have some more brick color there. Shadowing. There's some more uh, cerulean blue and purple. And some red. And we'll do some. Okay, and then over here. Burn Umber, French Ultramine Blue, Burn Sienna, and then a little bit of Sap Green. And Some blue. And I'm just keeping it dark. These are the glass windows over here. Okay. And I think we're getting there. I'll leave this one a little bit underdone because we are, we've done a lot of work here and we're sort of, you know, we've, a lot of it looks pretty good. I have to say most of the details are in. We'll do a little sky wash here. Over here we're going to do a little bit of... We'll do a little bit of shadowing over here. This tends to...
and then we have some And when I do my shadowing, I try to kind of mix uh, warm and cool, so maybe some cerulean blue and some yellow ochre. And then we just kind of, you know, a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of cerulean blue, you know, kind of almost like a dashed effect. Cerulean blue, yellow ochre, cerulean blue, like a dashed effect looks better than just going one straight color across and then we do that there we go and then we have to do this up here maybe another shadow up there I think that's looking good there's another darker shadow there a little bit of red and that is over here like that Alright, now up here there's some some shadowing. I'm just gonna do a little bit of shadowing on the white trim here. Cerulean blue and and uh, yellow ochre or raw sienna, that works too. Maybe blot, blot up a little bit. Um you can you can do a little bit of darker a couple of darker spots here and there but that's looking pretty good I, I think the only thing I would do is maybe a little more Maybe um, and then some people over here that are going to be and I'll take some just some very various colors maybe um, some cerulean blue maybe this is uh, we'll do some red here I'm just trying to mix up some colors here a little bit for our okay so we have our shadow under here Okay, and we're looking pretty good. A little bit of shadow there. So I'm just going around and trying to maybe do a few shadows and, and interesting uh, variations. Okay, good. Maybe I'll go with a larger brush just for a second or two. Cerulean blue, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, just a little bit of sky wash. That's all, just a little bit of sky wash there. And 
and I'm just splashing on some water to make that sky wash kind of flow a little bit. Give it that really watery look. Warm shadows. And a little bit of that cadmium lemon yellow there, a little bit of cadmium red. Just that warms it up a little bit, the uh, foreground. And the only thing we have to do now, I did go over a few areas that I thought were, so we take some yellow ochre, we mix that in with our titanium white. Titanium white and yellow ochre, just a touch of the yellow ochre, just to give it a little bit of warmth. The uh, titanium white is really white. It's almost just like a, a straight white, no uh, warmth or coolness to it. And then now we can do, we could go back in and get our we can get those bands, those beautiful stone bands there that we covered over with our red brick. And then we do that. That looks much better. And then we can do over here too as well, a little more white. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit to kind of have it like that. And what else can we do here? trying to warm up that front entrance way with the uh, um, signage. It's got a little bit of that warmth to it, like a creamy white color, like, an, uh, like a uh, beige or a cream color. Try to capture that. Same over here. So when you look at the photograph really carefully, you can kind of see there's some color to the whites. You can leave it white paper if you want. Sometimes that's easier to simplify or sometimes you can add in a little bit of color. The only problem with adding in color over something like this where the signage is, it, it uh, disturbs the uh, signage color that we painted in. So that's something I'll go over again maybe over here. I'll go over that once this 100% dries. But for the most part, we are 100% solid on this painting and you don't have to worry as long as you get most, you know, somewhat of the details, you're fine. We just don't want to get too many details in there. So we try to balance that effect of enough details that we're covering the, covering the basics of the painting, but we don't want to go too much that uh, it becomes too incredibly difficult to finish it and get it, you know, get a completed painting, so. All right, so a cafe and restaurant, this looks good. I hope everybody enjoyed this. This is a real, this is a lot of fun. And we'll just 
We'll maybe remove the tape here. Okay, and then it's got a little bit of a crisper border, which looks better. Okay, I hope everyone has fun with this. Give it a try. Give it, you know, try it a few different times. Maybe also uh, try, try out your favorite local area, restaurants, cafes, places you like to go. And it'll have a lot of excitement uh, uh, with, with that idea of, you know, places that you have fun going to, your favorite restaurants. Um, places you like to shop, all those great things. Have it, have that emotion go into your painting and into your drawing as you go. It'll make it a lot more fun. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. And again, please, uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Join along. We're here every week for you, creating new paintings, new drawings, all different subject matter, everything watercolor, and uh, we'll have a great time doing it. Okay, so we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.